Bethel High School was founded in 1952, being the oldest of the Bethel School District's three schools. It has had countless politicians, athletes, and academic all-stars pass through its hallways. Unfortunately, this does not reign as true as it once did. Students have voiced their concerns over the years, but their feelings have yet to be appropriately communicated. I'm a cheerleader, and so I go to a lot of different schools for a whole bunch of different events. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I have never seen a school as bad as ours. Our school is by far one of the like saddest <laughs> schools I've ever been to and walked into. Bethel High School is kind of the black sheep um, in the Pierce County area. Um, we're one of the most out-of-date high schools. I was in Cougar Mountain and brand new building, everything was fine. Coming here, it was totally different step back in time. Bethel students have a sense of apathy towards our building because that's the general sense of it. The current state of classrooms here impact the way students learn. It just feels really cramped in those classrooms and the classrooms also have really big sizes. One of my classes has like 34 people in it, I think, and it's just, it's really hard to learn with that many people crammed in one room, especially when not everybody even has a desk or a chair, and some people are having to sit on the counters. I sat on the counter one year, I sat under a desk one year, and I'm in my third year, and this is the first year where I haven't had to sit somewhere super obscure. It's just a sense of where could they go else? And you know, I don't want to have a class where kids have to sit uh, on the floor or on the counter because they don't have enough chairs or desks or, or there isn't physical space for them. Our classrooms have so many students, it's really hard to get one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. It's hard to hear the teacher sometimes. And to like, it's a, like a lot of my classes last year especially, we didn't really get through the whole curriculum because of like how much we have to stop and start and how it's hard for the one teacher to to everyone's difficulties. It actually hurts the students when our building is not designed to meet industry standards um, for 21st century learning. And so while we work really hard as a staff and district to make sure that our students get that learning opportunity, um, we all, everybody, even the community, has to work two to three times as hard to help our students get to that point. Bethel High School is also known for its building, which has yet to be updated. One must admit that it's hard to learn in a school that has water leaking into the roof. Our maintenance and facilities people are here all the time, anything that needs to be fixed, but there's only so many repairs that you can make to our HVAC system. There are only so many repairs that you can make. Our auditorium, we have chairs that if you know, that we've had to take out for safety reasons. And now we're missing all these seats from our auditorium. We actually need a whole new set of auditorium seats that are gonna be outrageous to pay for. When I go to choir concerts, there's people who are standing and not even able to sit down. And then they leave as soon as their kid's done or as soon as their friend's done. On stage, we do not have enough room for like our concerts a lot of the time. And then for parents watching our concerts, some of them leave early and like people don't have enough places to sit. When it rains super hard, Sometimes the building leaks and you can see visible water puddles and rain falling from the ceiling. Roof leaks here, heat pumps they're leaking, uh, plumbing, plumbing issues all over the school. You know, it's all these things you didn't have at Google Mountain. There's so many things just walking down the hallway. If you look up, you'll be able to see water stains where it leaks and even the light fixtures leak. People have done a lot to make this building go as far as it can. It's it's clean, it's beautiful, as much as we can make it look. So they're willing to work around those things and still teach, but it does impact and take attention away from where it needs to be. Students also attempt to eat in an ever increasingly loud and crowded lunchroom. I eat in the lunchroom about half the time. Sometimes I go outside. It's just so crowded and 
there's not enough space. I stand with a group of friends and it's super crowded and there's like five of us at like the one circular table and we all kind of like bumping elbows when we eat lunch, but that's how I eat lunch every day. I do eat in the lunchroom. However, I don't go into the lunch um, lines because those take a really long time to get your food at. I leave the classroom three minutes early just so I can get there and avoid all the crowds because the lines get so long. You can't walk through. You, it just gets so long where it's just a giant block of students until everybody gets their lunch. That's why I stopped eating there. All I do now is just eat in my classroom. And before, like, it, it used to not be so long to go in line and get my lunch, but now it just takes forever, kind of like a first come, first serve type of situation, which I don't think it should be. For some people who go in there, like, a little later on because they have farther classes from the cafeteria, it takes them a lot longer, maybe even 20 minutes. Even the most private areas in Bethel are crowded. Bathrooms. Like, especially for certain times of the day when we have uh, our passing periods, there's sometimes when it gets super crowded. And you'll like go there and then there's like three or four people like in line waiting to go, which I don't like, which isn't really what I want. Some of them don't flush, some of them do flush, some of them flush for two minutes straight. They're always full, so I know there's kids that are late to class, even if they get to the bathroom right as the bell rings, I know they're still going to be late because it's just they're always full and we only have two. Over the past few decades, the population surrounding the school has grown, but the building itself has remained the same. In this light, overcrowding is the simplest and most obvious term to describe what students deal with on a daily basis. There's some classes where like I don't even have time to stop at all like I just have to go because of the super bad hallway. It's like a bottleneck hallway that has many different names, bottleneck, suicide hallway. It's just so awful and you're always running into people and bumping into people. Like I'm so close to people I don't even know and everybody's pushing and shoving. Everybody touches your personal space. There's no personal space. You definitely get very good at knowing how to weave through people at some point. But. I was talking to kids about the bond to be able to find out how they feel. Like, you know, they don't like going through the bottleneck or kids struggle with getting from their music class to an upstairs classroom within five minutes. From band to Spanish, I have to go up the stairs and the stairwell's really crowded and it's hard to get to Spanish on time. When you walk that hall, how many kids are in the hallways? You can't get by, you know? Um, it's it needs to be updated that's for sure i have a lot of classes that are outside going back from outside and inside so i kind of have to walk like briskly through the hallways and stuff uh, i always hurry up and go to my class and go to my locker really quickly because just sometimes it gets so crowded all the time it usually takes me almost all passing period. like i'll start walking and i won't be there till the one minute though since 1980 the district has proposed 21 bonds Four of them have passed in nearly four decades, our most recent being in 2006. This unfortunate trend of low pass-fail ratio has left students struggling to feel comfortable in their own school. In overcoming the circumstances, students have worked especially hard to enhance the community around their school through active leadership, collaboration, and working together. I get to know students they are here, so it's not personally no more, but we have we have a lot of good students. I'm really happy. Bethel deserves to have a functional building, and uh, I think we are maybe two, three years past uh, what I think is fair to be called functional. I don't think that kids sit, deserve to sit in an old portable that smells kind of musty. I don't think kids deserve to sit in the classroom that every time it rains, you have to put buckets out. I don't think that kids deserve to be standing in the gym lobby and once again, rain is dripping on them. I think that they deserve a building that's going to um, fit their needs and they're able to focus in the classroom and on learning, which is where we should be focusing. I would say look into this um, this topic and please try to vote because it's really, really important and us students would really appreciate it. Plus, I know the teachers will too. Talk to students. Talk to students in your home and your, your kids your kids' friends and find out how they feel about Bethel High School in the building. Amidst the debate, students are doing their best to take action. Over that time span of a month, we students of Bethel High School have produced something worth considering when you vote.